As the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, battles the destruction of its facilities, the Commission has stated that it is still working on the financial requirements for the 2023 general elections. The federal government had approved 234.5 billion naira for the conduct of the 2019 general elections. And there are strong signs that the 2023 elections would cost much more. And moving on to Ekiti and the number of elections that will take place soon, we assess INEX readiness. Joining us to discuss this is Festus Okoye. He's a chairman, information and voter education for INEC. Thank you very much, Mr. Okoye, for joining us. Thank you so much. I do not recall any time that has been as tough as this year for the Independent National Electoral Commission, especially in the Southeast, with all of the um, burning and uh, you know destruction of your facilities. Of course, one would really um, wonder what 2023 will look like for you with all of these facilities gone and some of your non-sensitive uh, materials um, that have been destroyed. But let me start by talking about the um, expansion of polling units that you have uh, undertaken for the past few months. Uh, you have wrapped that up. Um, run us through it. You know, uh, the expansion of voter access to units is one of the major uh, um, projects that this particular commission embarked upon. Um, as we pointed out when we started this uh, project, uh, the last uh, polling units uh, in Nigeria, we are created in 1996, and that is um, uh, 25 years ago. And when these polling units were created, uh, the country had a total registered voter population of 50 million. Now, going into the 2019 elections, we had a total registered voter population of 84 million, and yet no new polling unit was created. And so what we had was a huge challenge in relation uh, to overcrowded polling units, in relation uh, to our staff uh, being unable uh, to deploy on time, even when they deploy on time, uh, to set up became a huge problem because of the surging number. We also had the challenge that uh, we, uh, uh, the pandemic set in, and it became difficult to also maintain uh, uh, physical distancing at the, at the level of the pulling units. Uh, so we made a determination that the time had come for us to break these 25 year old jinx of inability to assess new pooling units. And so we decided that since uh, we have been experiment experimenting with uh, vote, uh, uh, baby units, um, uh, voting points, and voting point settlements, that it was important for us to get the buy-in of the critical stakeholders uh, for us to convert these voting points and voting point settlements into full-fledged pooling units, and then move some of them out from their present locations uh, to uh, places that are underserved or uh, not served at all. Uh, so that's exactly what we have done. We have completed that assignment in all the states of the Federation. And this took us to all the 774 local government areas uh, of the country. And we referenced all the newly created um, or newly conceived uh, pulling units. And, um, and so we've just completed uh, action on that uh, by next week the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission will unveil uh, these uh, new pulling units, will unveil their location, and also will also unveil the ones we relocated from, where we, uh, from inappropriate uh, places uh, to new places. Uh, so uh, we, we are happy that we are able to break these 25 year old things in terms of having additional uh, pulling units in the country. Yeah, let's move on to. Um the fact that you are doing your voters, continuous voter registration, that's ongoing. Um, and we hear that you have 2,673 centers uh, where that is going to be ongoing across the country. Yes, by the 28th day of uh, uh, this month, uh, we are going to resume the continuous uh, voters registration uh, exercise in, in, the, in, the, in the country. Now, um, we have also introduced a new innovation in relation to the continuous voters registration exercise. And that is the fact that uh, young men and women and all the other uh, citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, who uh, know how to use the computer, who have uh, 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 um, uh, uh, laptops, who have iPads, who have uh, smartphones, uh, can begin their registration online and then do their biometrics 
at either at our state office or at the local government offices and so on. And so, so what do they do online? Are they supposed to fill the, forms online and then just go to your office uh, for their biometrics to be taken? Yes, that is for new, especially new registrants. Uh, they have to, because we are introducing a new generation enrollment device uh, that w w can capture both fingerprints and also can capture uh, facials. Uh, so we are trying to do um, a bridge between conforming to the law and also uh, 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 conforming uh, to the digital uh, 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 era we are in. Uh, so you start your registration uh, online, fill in all your details, and then uh, the, 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 the portal we have a pooling unit locator and maybe a registration area locator uh, that will show you where the new pooling units are and where you can go to go and capture your biometrics and your facials. That's a great innovation. Um, so let, let, let's talk about the readiness for the elections that are coming in 2023. We, the, 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 the fund or the finances for 20, uh, the last elections in 2019 ran into billions. And I did make reference to the fact that the arson and the destruction of INEC um, facilities um, this year alone um, is going to run into also maybe billions. Um, what does this make the budget look like? Because I see that you have already started a form of auditioning, uh, sorry, auditing of your um, facilities that have been destroyed. Um, is there any figure that INEC has already in sight? And is it going to be a problem for the federal government to uh, grant INEX, um, you know, budget for the elections for 2023? Is it something that's within reach? Is it going to be so much cost that it might cause us to drag the elections? Well, uh, we, we, we are preparing for some major elections. Um, as we are aware, the commission has fixed the Anambra governorship election uh, for 6th day of November, uh, 2021. Yes. Uh, so we are getting ready for the Anambra governorship election. But then the Akiti elections, we hear that it, they were suspended because of violence. No, 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 no. We have not suspended the conduct of the governorship elections in Anambra. And I'm going to explain to you why No, no, why I'm talking about Akiti states here. Akiti states. Of course, Anambra in itself, I hear, uh, we hear from the reports that are coming from Anambra that there are certain parties that were deregistered who are aggrieved. And uh, although INEC is saying that they, they only will register only 18 parties, you're recognizing only 18 of these parties. But then there are about 74 parties that have been deregistered. And they're claiming that a, a Supreme Court, uh, an appeal court, has uh, allowed that they be part of this election. But INEC is still saying that only 18 people will be on, that, um, uh, on, on the ballot paper. Why is that? Well, uh, you, you know, some of these cases are pending in the Supreme Court. And uh, in one of the cases, the Supreme Court had made it very, very clear and has affirmed the right of the Independent National Electoral Commission to, to re register political parties that do not meet the threshold provided in Section 225A of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And so that is settled. Now, there are also some of the parties that still have a uh, matter uh, pending in the Supreme Court. And we have made it very clear that the moment the Supreme Court, which is the final court of the land, uh, makes a determination and delivers judgment in relation uh, to uh, the provisions of Section 225A of the Constitution, and also in relation to the powers of the Commission to deregister the political parties, that whatever the Supreme Court decides, this particular Commission will abide. But as of today, we have 18 duly registered political parties in Nigeria, and it is those 18 political parties that are going to contest the Anambra governorship elections uh, that has been slated for November. And what if the Supreme Court, and what if these cases pending in the Supreme Court finally, um, you know, come through? I mean, we know that the courts have been shut down for some time. And what if these other parties now decide to take you to court again, saying that, oh, well, the Supreme Court has finally said that we are duly, supposedly, to be registered and sh should have been part of that election. That's going to mean that INEC will have to allow them into the elections or, or, or allow them to fill the candidate? I mean, this is going to somewhat mess up the election calendar, isn't it? You know, we, we, this commission doesn't engage in speculative projections. We are a law-abiding institution. We are a product of the Constitution and a product of the law. The Supreme Court is the final court of the land. And this commission has 
has a duty uh, to give effect to judgments and orders of the Supreme Court. So if the Supreme Court of Nigeria says that we should impute them into the Anambra governorship elections, of course, the, um, the, the commission will have no objection whatsoever uh, to that. Uh, so whatever the Supreme Court makes determines, we will, have, we will uh, comply. Uh, so um, we, we have everything um, under wraps. And whatever the Supreme Court decides, we have the capacity uh, to abide the Supreme Court decision. Knowing that the Southeast, as we speak now, is a hotbed of sorts, and with all of the agitations that have been going on, even though Imo, Imo State seems to be the hottest place, but Anambra has had its fair share with uh, the candidate, um, former Central Bank Governor, almost, um, you know, he, he, he missed, he was missed by the whiskers. Um, how ready is INEC in terms of security, and not just for um, your officers, but of course the people who are going to be casting their votes, knowing that uh, all is not well in the southeast. Well, uh, you know, you know, our major concern as at present uh, relates to the continuous uh, voters registration exercise that we are supposed to flag up on the 28th day of June 2021, and in this in this configuration. Based on the fact that we have election pending in Anambra State, what the commission decided and what we have determined is that we are going to have more equipment in Anambra State and also have additional staff in Anambra State to enable us to start the voters' registration exercise in Anambra, pull out from Anambra around August uh, this year, uh, uh, print the voters, uh, permanent voters' cards of the uh, regist new registrants and old registrants that have had their voters' cards defaced or had one problem or the other, and then uh, integrate the supplementary voters register into the main voters register and get it ready for election. So that is what we are um, uh, uh, getting ready for. So I think that the challenges in Anambra are, 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 are huge, they're enormous, uh, but we, this commission has the capacity to surmount some of these challenges. Yes, in Anambra State, we lost a total of uh, 376 electric generating sets. Uh, we lost 50% uh, of all the non-sensitive materials that we have already delivered to Anambra State prior to this particular election. We lost seven of the, our utility vehicles. And also we had the, our collection center burned down. But this commission will try as much as possible and as quickly as possible to recover from all these um, uh, challenges okay. in relation to Anambra State and get ready uh, for, 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 for the election. But we are liaising uh, with the uh, security agencies in terms of providing adequate security for our facilities, for our staff, and also okay. for every other individual that will be engaged in this process. But more fundamentally, our various communities, the political leaders, um, uh, the political parties themselves, themselves, uh, civil society groups and organizations must all come together uh, to enable us to degrade right. the present uh, level of insecurity, to enable the commission uh, to deploy and conduct a very good election in Anambra State. All right. Well, Festus Okoye is the chairman, Voter Education and Information with the Independent National Electoral Commission. Thank you very much for uh, giving us this information. Good luck with the elections. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you all for staying with us on Plus Politics today. I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.